All right, today we're gonna to talk about how easy it is to winterize your camper. Uh, I choose to use antifreeze instead of an air compressor. Um, and because I do that, I wanna make sure that my uh, sink discharge outlet has the um, hose connected to it so that my RV antifreeze will run down to the ground instead of all over my nice white camper. If you have a hot water tank in your camper, this will be the configuration when it's enabled. You see that the cold water can run in because the T connector is open and the hot water can run out. Now when you uh, winterize your camper, you don't want to put antifreeze through the uh, hot water heater um, as it's a real pain to clean out and you can simply uh, discharge all of the water in the heater uh, by uh, removing the uh, anode and letting it all drain out. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the bypass valve here so that the cold water immediately runs back to the hot and then I'm going to close both the inlet and the outlet. Uh, for the hot water heater. So essentially we'll be winterizing everything from here to the right uh, without letting any antifreeze go into uh, the hot water heater itself. Now in addition to enabling the bypass feature in the water heater inside the camper, you need to actually drain the water uh, from the heater reservoir itself. So what I'm gonna do is open up the cover here and I don't have any water in at this moment, but if I did, I would pull on the pressure release valve. You, you see a little bit of air pressure coming out there. That's gonna make it uh, much uh, easier for you to come down here and remove this little anode uh, here without it shooting out or spraying too much water on you. Uh, once you remove that anode, all of the water from the uh, hot water uh, tank will drain out. And then I usually uh, leave the anode out for you know a couple hours uh, to let uh, the remaining water evaporate. And then I put it uh, back in and you're gonna want a torque wrench for both removing uh, and installing the uh, anode rod to avoid uh, over tightening. I believe mine is a one and one quarter inch uh, deep socket that I've got hooked up uh, to my uh, torque wrench. And when you're done, you can simply uh, close uh, the cover and rest assured that your hot water heater is uh, free of any water and fully winterized. Now to distribute the antifreeze throughout all of the pipes, including the sink, shower, uh, to the hot water heater, although it's bypassed, as well as uh, the outside shower, I'm gonna use the water pump because that will also winterize the pump itself. You notice uh, the inlet pipe from the uh, water tank uh, reservoir that's under the camper is right here. I'm going to disconnect that and connect the pipe that I've made uh, with the quick screw-in fitting uh, to the inlet of the water pump and then I just simply dunk the other side of that tube into my uh, RV antifreeze um, container. Now here's the tube that I mentioned that I've fashioned with a screw-on connector and a washer in there to create a tight seal and then I've got a 90 degree elbow and it's simply clamped onto a very simple tube that I dunk into uh, my antifreeze container. So what I'm going to do is I've unscrewed uh, the hose going to the uh, camper's reservoir tank. You notice I have a towel down there because a little bit of water does uh, leak out from uh, the water pump itself. Now I'm going to screw in uh, my custom tube and dunk that in to the RV uh, antifreeze so that the pop-up camper's uh, water pump will pull antifreeze instead of fresh water uh, from my reservoir tank. Now one more thing you want to do before actually distributing antifreeze is remove the water filter from your water filter canister. Now I never use mine, uh, but if you had one in there you would not want to contaminate it uh, with uh, antifreeze. So you notice that the uh, filter canister is empty right now and the filter is sitting right next to it. So we've also got the uh, tube connected to the pump and I'm going to dunk that in the RV antifreeze and we'll be ready to start pumping it throughout the system. All right, I've got my tube dunked into the a gallon container of RV antifreeze. It's normally pink. You definitely do not want to use uh, car antifreeze, which is incredibly toxic uh, to both you and I'm assuming possibly even your camper. Now this is going to be sucked into the pump once I turn it on 
Uh, and I'm going to go do that right now. And you'll see the RV antifreeze is coming out of the uh, gallon container and going into my custom tube that I created and being distributed throughout the system. Now, the first area that I'm going to go ahead and discharge the antifreeze uh, clear through the faucet is the kitchen sink. Now, you'll remember that I uh, put the uh, hose on the sink discharge so that the pink antifreeze would run clear down to uh, the ground, which is you know not really toxic uh, to, to go ahead and distribute uh, on the ground, at least in small increments. But I'm also going to want to make sure and remove you know anything else that I would not need uh, to get antifreeze on, which includes the sink strainer in this case. Now, since I've uh, cut off or enabled the bypass uh, to the hot water heater. When I turn on the hot water, it's actually going to distribute cold water, but it's at least going to run uh, the antifreeze over to uh, the hot water heater and through that piping. So you'll notice I've got uh, regular fresh water coming out initially, um, and here shortly it will turn to the pink antifreeze. Now we're starting to see pink antifreeze, so that means we've got uh, th that part of the line uh, winterized. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the cold water now. And we've got antifreeze coming out there as well. Now what this has also done for us is put uh, antifreeze in the, the P-trap of the sink so that even that uh, area is now winterized. Now the next area that I normally do is the interior shower simply because I'm already inside the camper and can do it quickly. But it's also important because this is probably the longest uh, pipe line run uh, from the water pump uh, clear around the camper over to the shower. So it allows me to get that one first uh, while I still have a rather full uh, gallon of antifreeze. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hold the shower head outside of the camper so that it's spraying onto my driveway and away from the camper itself. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn on the hot and then the cold. You'll notice on the uh, hot we've got water running out right now and then it just turned to pink antifreeze so that means I can turn it off. Now since I did not discharge the water and antifreeze into the shower itself simply to keep it clean, I will want to pour a small amount of antifreeze down uh, the drain here uh, so that the uh, you know drain and p-trap there uh, gets winterized as well. Now here's a quick tip when you're done uh, with the shower I go ahead and put a, a Ziploc baggie over it simply because I store uh, things in the shower while I'm traveling including my pillows and I really don't want even the slightest amount of uh, residue antifreeze dripping from that shower head uh, onto uh, my blankets and pillows. Now you'll notice that my first gallon of antifreeze is nearly gone, which is pretty typical when I uh, winterize in this order, um, which is why I did the interior sink and the interior shower uh, in succession so that I could watch uh, the, the level of antifreeze that's left. So before I go outside and do the exterior shower, I'm actually going to switch over uh, this hose to the full gallon of antifreeze so that I'm sure I won't run out and get uh, air instead of antifreeze uh, in those lines. Next we're going to look at how to winterize your cassette or removable toilet, which is quite easy. I mean the cassette itself uh, simply pulls out and you can go uh, dump and clean it and get all of the uh, water or uh, waste residue out of there. And then you also can drain uh, the actual uh, fresh water that's in there for the flushing uh, simply by unscrewing this and uh, tipping it down. Now, I don't have any water in my toilet. I've never used it before, uh, but if I did, uh, most of the water would come out there. And I say most because you also need to take uh, this little tube here, which indicates uh, how full your uh, water is, and go ahead and drop it down and let uh, the remaining water uh, run out there. Alright, so here we have the exterior shower and we're basically going to do it the same as we uh, did the sink and the interior shower. We're going to turn on uh, one, either hot or cold first, and wait till uh, pink RV antifreeze comes out instead of water. And then we'll shut that off and switch to the other. 
right, so we start with water, and very quickly on the exterior shower, it turns to pink antifreeze. And I say very quickly because uh, it's very close to uh, the water pump itself, as well as the other uh, tubes that we had already uh, winterized. So there's not a whole lot of fresh water left in there, and the RV antifreeze quickly gets uh, pumped to the exterior shower. Now the last thing that you will definitely want to winterize is your actual uh, water reservoir or holding tank. Now uh, I always drain mine after every trip, but if you need to, you simply turn that knob uh, 180 degrees and all of the water uh, will run out of your camper as well as uh, out of the inlet hose that goes from the reservoir uh, to the water pump uh, so that you make sure and have nothing but air uh, within that pump, or hose, sorry, since we did not put antifreeze in it. Now looking back at our water pump area, there's a couple things uh, that I normally check for. One is that the uh, sink drain is indeed full of antifreeze, uh, which in this case it is. I can see the pink uh, tint on it. Uh, secondly, there's these little T's back here that allow a gravity drain to happen on both the hot and cold water lines. I go ahead and pop those uh, just to relieve pressure uh, from the system and you know it does let a little bit of uh, antifreeze out uh, which is, is that much less that I have to discharge uh, when I'm uh, you know dewinterizing the camper. And then finally I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my uh, custom uh, hose that's uh, you know connected to uh, the inlet uh, of the water pump which is on the bottom one here you see the pink fluid running in and I'll go ahead and reconnect uh, the hose to the freshwater tank so that when I am ready to dewinterize and use the camper again uh, I simply turn on the water pump and fresh water uh, comes in you also notice that I've put a white towel down here to catch uh, a little bit of uh, RV antifreeze that will spill out of my uh, custom tube solution when I disconnect it uh, from the water pump. All right, we're all done. Here you see that I've removed my uh, temporary hose that uh, took antifreeze into the water pump and I've hooked back up the normal uh, hose that goes to the uh, water uh, reservoir below the camper. Now I hand tighten that and then take a pair of uh, vice grips and turn it, oh, maybe another half turn or so to make sure it's uh, very tight. Um, and then when I dewinterize the camper and start to use the uh, fresh water system again, I'll open this access panel and just make sure that no water is leaking uh, between those connections or uh, elsewhere. So that's it. We've winterized uh, all of our components. It only took me, looking at my watch, about 10 or 15 minutes. So now that we're all done, I've got a little bit of antifreeze left over that I sometimes take on trips where I might want to use the sink discharge um, but then uh, winterize before I trailer back home through uh, cold weather. And then also I'm going to go ahead and put my um, tube that I use to pull the RV antifreeze into the water pump back in the camper in case I ever need to do you know, any emergency uh, winterization out in the field. 